Hi there, everybody. I'm Joe Kelly, Director Emeritus of the United County History Center, and I'm standing in the Hall of Fame Gallery here at 1608 Genesee Street. It has been my pleasure to introduce the inductees for the past 20 years. A little history. The Historical Hall of Fame was started in 1946. The goal was to honor individuals from Oneida County who made an impact on our community and those who made an impact on the world. And the Oneida County History Center has been very successful in doing just that. The very first class to be inducted included Utica native Barbara Cope, who would eventually become a saint, Saint Marianne of Molokai. General William Floyd, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Henry Inman, a world-renowned portrait painter and landscape artist. James Schoolcraft Sherman, who was Vice President of the United States under William Howard Taft, and Garrett Smith, the famed abolitionist. The initial run of the Hall of Fame only lasted five years, but it was revived in 2001 and named after benefactors David and Carolyn Ellis. It has been going strong ever since. Past historical Hall of Fame inductees include founders of Oneida County towns and villages, world-class athletes and artists, business and community leaders, scientists, inventors, pioneers, as well as local and national politicians. We're excited that the 2021 inductees will join an outstanding group of individuals who have shaped our community and made Oneida County what it is today. The 2021 class includes Utica College professor and prolific writer Jack Behrens, international literacy advocate and Rome native wealthy Hansinger Fisher, abolitionist Reverend Bariah Green, successful businessman and U.S. Congressman Richard Hanna, and Utica's first black teacher, Jermaine Wesley Logan. We hope you enjoy this program about these exceptional people, people who help make Oneida County what it is today. Thank you for joining the History Center to celebrate and honor excellence in local history. John Jack Behrens was a nationally known columnist, editor, and writer who was a teacher for more than 40 years, but still found time to write 24 books, thousands of articles, columns, and essays. Born in Lancaster, Ohio in 1933, Jack earned his bachelor's degree from Bowling Green State University and a master's degree from Penn State University. The Army drafted Jack in 1956, and he was assigned to the 7th Infantry in Korea. There, he worked for the Stars and Stripes Daily. He taught at Ohio Wesleyan, University of Maryland, and Marshall University before joining the Utica College faculty in 1965 as an assistant professor of public relations. In 1972, he founded Utica College's journalism studies major, and he was successful in bringing many national grants to the college. Among the many awards he earned at Utica College was twice receiving the Outstanding Faculty Award from the Utica College Alumni Council. Alex Haley, the American writer and author of the 1976 bestseller Roots, The Saga of an American Family, wrote, Jack Barron's course is one of the best, one of the most effective writing courses I've seen, including the highly touted classes at a couple of major universities. I firmly believe that had I had such a class when I started, I could have saved five or more years of trial and error work. <laughs> a well-deserved compliment for Barron's. Jack was a prolific writer. Topping the list of bestsellers, he wrote, Typewriter Gorillas, close-ups of the 20 top investigative reporters. He wrote about the lifestyles, working methods, personalities, and accomplishments of such reporters as Carl Bernstein, Cy Hirsch, and Jack Anderson. His work appeared in Harvard's Neiman Reports, Writer's Digest, Mankind, National Observer, Business Journal, and hundreds of other publications. Jack also wrote several books about the big band era, when musicians such as Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, and Benny Goodman were as well known in the 1930s and 1940s as today's top stars. He had a personal reason for loving the subject. He was an accomplished drummer and played with many groups. Jack moved to Florida in retirement after having lived in Clinton for 51 years and being elected to the village's board of trustees. He was business editor for the Elks Magazine and was a member of the Rotary Club of Utica and the Authors Guild. 
Jack passed away in July 2021, but his legacy lives on in Oneida County history. Wealthy Hansinger was born in Rome, New York in 1879. She was an intellectual, activist, and feminist, best known for her work as the founder of Literacy House, a grassroots organization that focused on teaching farmers to read. Wealthy attended Rome Free Academy, graduating in 1896, and studied music at Syracuse University, earning her bachelor's degree in 1900. She had aspirations of becoming an opera singer and further studied at Carnegie Hall. But her plan changed when she heard a missionary speaker and became inspired to complete her education as a teacher and changed her life's course. Wealthy moved to China in 1905 to head the Ban Lin School, which was the only school for girls in a province of 45 million people. Here she taught for over 10 years where her instruction became a prototype for women's education. She returned to America when World War I broke out and turned the administration of the school over to the Chinese. She worked in Europe as a member of the War Work Council and after the war edited the Methodist magazine World Neighbors in New York. In 1924, at the age of 44, she married Frederick Bond Fisher, American Methodist Bishop of India and Burma. After her husband's untimely death in 1938, Wealthy wrote his biography and studied educational systems throughout the world. As a widow, she visited India in December 1947 and met with Mahatma Gandhi, an old friend of her husband's. Gandhi asked her to work for India's villages by teaching adult villagers to read and write. She was reluctant to teach adults because she felt that her career of teaching children in China had not prepared her for the task. But Gandhi told her to teach the adult villagers to read materials about the things that concerned them, their work, and their land. In 1956, she opened Literacy House's 23-acre campus in Lucknow, India. Today, the organization is part of World Education, which aids education programs in 30 countries, including the United States. Wealthy was honored by the Indian government, which based its village literacy programs on her ideas. She appeared on an Indian stamp issued in 1960 and received the Nehru Literacy Award in 1968. She returned to the United States in 1973 and passed away at the age of 101 in Southbury, Connecticut. Her childhood home in Rome still stands on West Court Street and is commemorated with a state historic marker. Born on March 24, 1795, Green was a noted reformer, abolitionist, temperance advocate, minister, and teacher. He graduated from Middlebury College in Vermont as his class valedictorian in 1819 and went to Andover Theological Seminary to serve as the minister. Shortly afterward, he became a college professor, first in New England and then at Western Reserve College in Hudson, Ohio. In 1833, Green located to Whitesboro, New York to serve as president of the Oneida Institute. He agreed to lead the transformational school on two conditions. First, he had to be allowed to continue advocating and advancing the call for immediate abolition. And second, there would be no restrictions on the admission of students based on their race or class. During his nearly one dozen years of leading the school, the United Institute became the first institution of higher learning to admit African-American men just as readily as they admitted white men. While leading the college, Green transformed the United Institute into a truly abolitionist school. Milton Sernett, Green's biographer, wrote, Beriah Green was a radical abolitionist at a time when the voices of freedom in America were few in number. Green embraced an educational and social vision that went beyond the mere ending of slavery and embodied equal opportunity for all. Green was a charter member of the American Anti-Slavery Society, the New York Anti-Slavery Society, and the Liberty Party, which was completely devoted to immediate abolition of slavery. He assisted in the formation of the Congregational Church of Whitesboro and served as its pastor from 1843 to 1867. When the United Institute closed due to financial and political strain, Green remained in Whitesboro and continued his anti-slavery advocacy. He passed away on May 5, 1874, while delivering a speech on temperance, another of his passions. 
For all his efforts, the great advocate for emancipation was inducted into the Abolitionist Hall of Fame in Peterborough, New York in 2016, and now joins the Oneida County Historical Hall of Fame. Oneida County native and U.S. Congressman Richard Hanna is remembered today not only for his charitable contributions to the community, the United Way, Habitat for Humanity, and Annie's Fund, which helped provide grants to impoverished women in Herkimer and Oneida counties, for example, but for having been a Republican congressman for three terms from 2011 to 2017, representing the 24th and later the 22nd congressional district that stretched from Lake Ontario south to the Pennsylvania border. As a moderate Republican from central New York, Hannah was revered as a quiet backbencher whose independent streak propelled him to be ranked as the second most bipartisan member of the U.S. House of Representatives during the 2015 and 2017 session. Through his efforts, the Civilian Service Recognition Act unanimously passed the House and was enacted into law. It provided for the United States flag to be presented to any federal employee who was killed as a result of a crime, an act of terrorism, a natural disaster, or other extraordinary circumstance. Additionally, he helped marshal the bipartisan reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. Representative Anthony Brindisi, a Utica Democrat who later held the seat Hanna once held, said, Richard Hanna put people before politics, our hometown above all else, and he led with a true heart. This was evidenced publicly and privately through the philanthropic and civic work before, during, and well after his time in Congress. Robert Julian, a longtime friend of Hannah's as well as a former justice of the state Supreme Court, said, As a member of Congress, Richard was a man of courage and character. He put country and community ahead of partisan politics. He was willing to stand up to the leadership of his party when he thought he was right. Richard Lewis Hanna of Barneveld was born in Utica in 1951 and grew up in Marcy. He graduated from Whitesboro High School and graduated from Reed College in Portland, Oregon in 1976 with degrees in economics and political science. He returned to Oneida County and started what became a successful construction firm and property management business, becoming a major builder of schools and government buildings. After serving three two-year terms in Congress, he decided not to seek re-election in order to spend more time with his wife Kim and children Emerson and Grace. Richard Hanna passed away from cancer on March 15, 2020, at the age of 69. Jermaine Wesley Logan was once called the Underground Railroad King and is credited with having aided more than 1,500 freedom seekers. He has been identified as Utica's first African-American school teacher. Jermaine was born in Davidson County, Tennessee on February 5, 1813. His mother was an enslaved woman called Cherry, and his father, his white master, David Logue. Jermaine escaped to Ontario, Canada in 1834, later moving to Rochester, New York, where he worked at a hotel, then to Oneida County. He studied at the Oneida Institute in Whitestown, led by Beriah Green. Here, Logan learned that the African-American children were not allowed to attend the common schools in the city of Utica, so he started a school for African-American children. He rented a room and taught about 40 students. The 1844-1845 Utica City Directory lists 11 Union Street as a school for colored children. This is believed by some to have been his classroom. Logan married Caroline Storham of Busti, New York in 1840. The couple had six children, including Amelia, who married Louis Douglas, the son of Frederick Douglas. The family moved to Syracuse in 1841, where Germain continued to teach school and became a licensed preacher of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, serving congregations throughout central New York and the Southern Tier. In addition to his career as an educator and minister, Logan was an active abolitionist leader. His home was widely known as a station or depot for the Underground Railroad, and he submitted letters to Syracuse newspapers and publications openly discussing his activities and asking for funds to assist fugitives. After emancipation, Logan took an interest in the welfare of the newly freed people and continued his church work. 
He was elevated to the rank of Bishop of the AME Zion denomination in 1868 and was responsible for the Allegheny and Kentucky Conferences. In 1872, Logan was about to take a mission assignment to the Pacific Coast when tuberculosis forced him to resign. He died on September 20, 1872 in Saratoga Springs, New York. He was inducted into the National Abolitionist Hall of Fame in 2011 for his dedication and contributions to the abolitionist movement.